I read all of the comments, especially in my day in the life videos. You guys are ruthless, it's hurting my feelings. A lot of people are telling me that I don't talk enough about what interns actually do on a day-to-day -day basis and what their responsibilities are. So I thought I'd make a video talking about that today, but you don't listen to random interns on the internet. So I brought in my friend Clement, who is a former Google software engineer. He hosted three interns and he's also the founder of Algo Expert. Happy to be here, Chris. And the stuff that we're gonna be talking about in this video is gonna be especially relevant to Fang internships, but it's also gonna be relevant to internships at other tech companies like startups and mid-sized companies. So first of all, I wanna just get a brief overview. What is an internship? What's the goal of an internship and how are they designed, at least from a host's perspective? As an intern host, I think there are really two goals, two goals for the internships. And this is something that I like to sit down my interns at the beginning of the internships and tell them in a one-on-one. -on -one. The first one is as the intern host, I want to make sure that you have the best chance of getting a return offer yeah. at the end of your internship, whether that be a return offer for another internship or for a full-time engineering mm -hmm. position. The second main goal of the internship is gonna to be to give you, the intern, the best possible experience. I think this is really important to understand because we really want you to have a great time. You are basically, as an intern, kind of like a brand ambassador oh, okay, yeah. for the company, right? You're gonna be going back to college, you're gonna be talking to all your friends, you're gonna be making day in the life of videos. <laughs> we wanna make sure that you have a great time such that if you are a super qualified candidate and you get a return offer, you're gonna accept it. How are these projects actually designed? Right, so I think that it actually starts a little bit before the project. Oh, okay. At the yeah. very beginning, typically an intern will be given some starter bugs. I like to give very almost trivial bugs just to get interns acclimated to the code base. Okay. So as someone who worked on the front end, some, these bugs would oftentimes be text changes on right. the user interface. And this will get the intern kind of used to pushing up code and that kind of stuff. Did you get that at your right. internship? Yeah, so a lot of my starter bugs, they were usually like updating deprecated components, doing some refactoring, writing test cases. These sound very trivial and meaningless, but they're really just to ramp you up and get you familiar with how things work uh, and get you into the workflow. You really don't want to dive straight into a meaty project. Yeah, and that's actually why I often like to even have another piece of work in between the starter bugs and the main project, okay. which I like to call the starter project. Right, right, yeah, I've seen those, yeah. Something that can be completed in maybe two weeks that will give right, the intern right. this feeling of a first win. Maybe right. they'll get a little feature completed. It's mm. not gonna be the main project, right? But it's much more complex than the starter bugs. In a worst case scenario, maybe this starter project takes the entire internship and at least they have something done and it doesn't look bad. Exactly. Right. So as far as the main project goes, what's the thinking behind assigning an intern a project? How do you go about choosing one? So in an ideal world, an intern project is gonna be challenging such that the intern finds it stimulating and learns from it, but isn't too blocked either. Mm -hmm. It's also gonna be a bit removed from other engineers' work mm -hmm. such that the intern is not blocking other engineers, right. but you don't want the intern to feel too isolated either. So ideally right, right. it is sort of related it's to like the It's like self-contained but relevant. Self-contained but relevant is a good way to put right, it. Right, right. And then ideally, this is sort of my thought process when I come up with a project for my interns, I try to make the project something that the interns will be able to very easily explain to other people. Right, and right. ideally something that they'll be able to launch. So here I can give you an example if you want. Okay, yeah. One of the intern projects that I gave my first two interns was data visualizations for our user interface. So basically right. they were they, they consumed an API and they put graphs on the user interface of a Google Cloud Platform right. product. And that was a very sort of self-contained feature that they could easily describe in the resume. It was a very empowering thing because they launched it. And it was just, I think overall a pretty good success. So do they like make every single part of that from scratch? So they wrote the front end. They con they had this backend API that they consumed. They of course had to talk to backend engineers, which I think oh, was okay. a good sort of yeah, uh, yeah. development process. Yeah. Exactly. They had to talk to product managers to figure out how the product should actually look like and UX designers, but they only implemented the front end component of it. So if you're watching this, you probably guessed that engineering interns write code or work on a project, but what else actually happens in the day to day? Because you're not just showing up and writing code for eight hours straight at your desk, right? There's a lot of other responsibilities. What do those look like? Right, so one responsibility that not all interns know about is writing a design doc. Yeah. This is not something that every intern is gonna have to do. Yeah. It's often thought of more as a stretch goal, but it's where you kind of scope out the feature mm -hmm. and uh, talk about contentious issues in the form of a document. And that's something that's really important. So once you have your design docs ironed out, everyone's on board, you start coding, but you don't just code for like weeks and then 
push it out to every single person, right? You have to go little chunk at a time and you go through code reviews, right? Exactly. What do those look like? So code reviews are exactly what you described when you're pushing out small chunks of code and your peer engineers are gonna be reviewing it and giving you feedback on it. Yeah. And oftentimes it'll be feedback that's sort of blocking where they say, hey, this could actually be done this way that might be really better. And so you'll have to sort of reiterate on your code and fix it. And this should not be viewed as something that's scary or right, right. You know, you're doing something wrong. It's more like we're working towards a common goal. We wanna make the code very clean, very readable. It's like when you write an essay yeah. and you have to rewrite it for a second draft. Right, right. And code reviews are almost unavoidable. It doesn't mean you're doing a bad job with your coding. There are a lot of parts of the project you just can't know about, like dependencies, deployment complications, styling, conventions for the right. team. And this is very team specific too. You basically bounce back and forth doing comments in like a diff or a pull request yep. and then push it out. So exactly. once your code is reviewed, that's also not it. You gotta go through usually QA and deployment, right? Right, and that's something that I th I've seen a lot of people, even non-software engineers wonder. Like yeah. When you write your code and you, you push it up, does it immediately appear on say the YouTube homepage? No, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Especially if you're dealing with an outward facing product, your feature will be hidden and you might have to sort of progressively roll it out to people. Right. So you don't want to go to 100% of all people because that can be dangerous and also you might not track all of the metrics you need to track. So right. It'll often start with you push it to people in the company to manually like test it or you'll have specific QA or quality assurance testers trying to break your code and then giving you reports and feedback on it. Like for example, like me, I didn't have accessibility labels or it wasn't like voiceover enabled for like Android devices you know right. and then you need to iron those out and then you push out to like a specific beta testing group and then maybe to specific regions and then let it sit for a bit and then push it out to everyone so software engineering interns sometimes have to act like data scientists because you run like user split or time split experiments just to gauge its performance its impact on other parts of the business or company and its overall like reception from users and so on and then once you finish with all that you've launched the feature you're done with the internship nope no, you're not. You oftentimes have other auxiliary tasks that you might not be aware of, things like knowledge transfer. You've right, probably right. learned a ton from your internship that maybe only you know about, not even your intern manager right. or your peers. And it's very important that you transfer that knowledge either in the form of a document or perhaps a presentation to your Yeah, team. most interns will have one, two, maybe more presentations. Right. Um, and it's good to write like a full write-up of everything that you did. You'll send it out into like the team's group chat or yep. post it on like a wall somewhere yeah. or, or like write a report or a slideshow or something. So this sounds like a lot. How do you know if someone's doing the right things or doing well enough of these? What do these actually count for? So basically throughout the internship, your intern manager yeah. and your peers are kind of working with you and they're kind of seeing, okay, is this person doing well? Would they be a good full-time engineer or yeah. a good you know, next level intern for the next year? And in the middle of your internship, you'll likely have a midterm evaluation. This is not like a test that you're taking. It's more, you'll fill out sort of all the stuff that you've done. You'll kind of display it in right. form. Right. And then maybe you'll have peers and your manager who will write a review on you, right. a performance review, maybe assign to you some sort of rating or grade and then you'll have the same thing as a final evaluation at the very end which will sort of form into a packet that might go to a hiring committee or something like that uh, that will decide if you get a return offer. So I think that's pretty much it. This is just a brief overview. If you want us to talk more in detail about a specific part of an internship, drop a comment down below. We'll discuss it in another video. But overall, I think a lot of the internship, the time you spent in it is spent getting context, familiarizing yourself with how things work and so on. You're not just gonna be grinding out code. You're gonna be messaging people, setting up meetings, writing out docs, planning things out writing code, then deleting it after code reviews yep. and rewriting it, and then rolling things out, watching things break, and then trying it again, and so on. And it's a huge, like kind of a cumbersome process, but that's kind of the whole point. It is a 12 to 14 week time period where your main job is to learn. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. Wait, this is my video. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for watching. No, actually, no, that's kind of rude. <laughs> So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully this was a good brief overview of what an internship is. If you want us to go into more detail into a specific part of an internship, drop a comment down below, smash the like button while you're at it. And it seems pretty straightforward and a lot of these parts make sense, but you'd be surprised how many other misconceptions there are about internships. We actually made another video on Clement's channel where we break down the most common myths that we see, especially in the comment section. Go check it out, link in the description and on his channel, he does some cool card tricks.
<laughs> That's lame. <laughs> okay, I'll see you guys next time. Okay, I like that. Woo!